Are you frustrated because everything that you used to do that helped you get your weight off isn't working anymore? Yeah, me too. So let's talk about that for a minute. Let me just briefly say to you that I am a lifelong dieter. I have done every bit of research that all of you have probably done and then some. In addition to that, I've done a lot of extra research because my dad has diabetes. My both grandparents on both sides had diabetes and I watched them struggle a lot with it. And one thing that I learned and realized is that diet impacts that disease greatly. And now at this point in my life, being 51 years old and in a point in my weight loss journey where I have taken off a good amount of weight, I've taken off about 34 pounds. I say give or take because I am in that four pound bounce. I am bouncing the same four pounds up and down for almost a year. The bad part of that is I am not in maintenance, but my body thinks that I am. My body has decided that it's going to stall and plateau, even though I'm not in maintenance. So that is what this video is about. If that is you and you need a little help, we're going to figure out diabetic. But I, I don't want to become a diabetic. And because I have some genetic um, factors working against me, and also because I kind of feel in the research that I've done that I am insulin resistant. Why do I say that? Well, these are the reasons. I am a person that if I eat a meal, like even breakfast, let's say I have eggs and guacamole and things that um, should sustain me, fill me up, I immediately crave sugar. I am a person that carries weight through my middle. Again, yet another symptom of insulin resistance, people that tend to carry it through the middle like an apple. Um, also, if you're a person that when you eat a big meal, you kind of get that brain fog and you feel like you need to go take a nap. So for me, I'm kind of going check, check, check. And then when I add in the family history, I get a little nervous. So I have been doing a lot of research to say, how can I improve my diet, my weight loss, but also how can I sort of ward off some of these um, latent problems that I don't want to develop? And one thing that I have realized is the quickest way to get your metabolism going again is to ward off insulin resistance to the best of your ability. And I discovered that there are some things that we can do to do exactly that and as a side effect, speed up our metabolism. So let's jump into what we one, when you eat, your body produces insulin. That's a fact, okay? Now, and you guys know, I'm not a nurse or a dietitian or a doctor. You guys know that. I know I don't have to say that. Everything I say to you is coming from research and things that I have done for myself, things I have tried out on myself, good or bad. I tell you guys about both. So having said that, when you eat food, your body produces insulin. Then your insulin jumps to a number. If it jumps to a number that's too high, maybe that means you're pre-diabetic or maybe that means that you're diabetic. Um, and that's just it in a basic little general nutshell. So we don't want to spike insulin. How do we do that? Well, one of the things we can do, which will help speed your metabolism, is do not eat between meals. Easier said than done, I get that. Snacker over here myself. So what I have to say to myself is, why are you snacking? Why are you doing that? Are you not eating enough at the meal that you prepare for yourself? Probably. Could you eat a little bit more fat? Count the points, but eat a little bit more fat and maybe that will sustain you. Could you eat something that isn't empty calories? Okay, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the whole reason that if you eat a big plate of Chinese food, you love it, but an hour from now, you're starving. That's what happens. It just does not sustain you. 
So one of the really big things you can do is really analyze those three meals that you're eating a day and make sure that you're eating enough calories, eating enough points, eat what you need. We have all done this, you guys. I know you've done this. I do it all the time. If I have a meal that I think is too calorie heavy or too whatever heavy, point heavy, whatever it may be, it's sort of like I want to punish myself and my next meal has to be really light. Well, guess what happens? That does not work because you will go calorie deplete. You will go deplete in certain macros that sustain you. So if you have, let's say you have something that you just grab a bag of chips because you're like, how bad could they be? They say Weight Watchers on them. I'm going to eat a bag of these chips. They're only three points. But what happens? You're immediately hungry again. So you go eat something. So let's say you decide you're going to have a zero point food and you go grab a banana. Once again, sugar goes up, insulin goes up. So your body does not have that chance in between meals to stop producing insulin, which moves you towards that insulin resistance, which slows down your metabolism. So don't, to the best of your ability, snack between meals. The other thing you can do that is super helpful, and I'm gonna link the video that I did. I did a, a video on intermittent fasting, and I will link it below in the description box. It's definitely worth watching. If you are intimidated by intermittent fasting and you're like, what the heck? What is it? What are the rules? It is so easy. Let me just explain it to you this way. And please do watch the video, but this is it simplistically. So the longer you are not eating, the more time your body is, one, not producing insulin. Secondly, it moves into a phase called autography, and that is where your body can heal itself. Now, this, you know, because I've done so much research on you know, the diabetes, and I have family members that have had cancer and things like this. I'm always worried about health, you guys. If not just dieting, health is equally as important because you want to have a good quality of life as well. You might look great, but if you're not healthy, that's no good, right? So those are the two really, really great things that happen when you do intermittent fasting. So you might be thinking, well, how long am I supposed, I'm not going to fast for a day. No one wants you to. So a lot of times you hear about people that say they fast for 12 hours or 14 hours or 16 hours, and that might seem too much for you, but it's not, and here's why. So here's how you do it. Start like this. Stop eating at 7 o'clock at night. Begin eating at 7 in the morning. That's 12 hours. Easy peasy. You're sleeping. Don't get up at midnight and eat. You can control that. So once you get the 12-hour fast down, move it to 14. Go just a little bit longer. So 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. Then if you're really comfortable with it and you're loving it and you love the effects of it, do another two hours. Go to 16 hours, 7 p.m. to 11 a.m. Do whatever works for you. The longer time frame you can give your body, the more it has time to not work. It wants to take a break. And that's really, really good. And this should hopefully be one of the easier ones for all of us is just simply make better food choices. So let's go over it. You're first going to learn to fast from, you pick the time, six to six, seven to seven, eight to eight. You pick the time that works for you. So intermittent fasting, you're going to get that under control. Then you're going to stop snacking between meals. So maybe that means you start by, okay, I'm not going to have that mid-morning snack or I'm not going to have that three o'clock snack. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that you're stressed out. You can't do it. Don't do that. It is okay. Do the best you can. Ease into it and don't set an expectation that you can do everything at once because that will set you up for failure. So, the last thing that you're going to do is simply make better choices. And by that, I mean, check what the net carbs are on the food you're eating. So I did, again, another video on this of how to do low carb, not keto, but low carb, because 
We're not going to do keto because then the fat is too high and we can't stay within our points. This is more something just to speed up your metabolism. So choose foods that do not convert to sugar. So if you are craving a piece of fruit, make it a berry because the berry family has that lower GI rating, but um, it converts to sugar slower in your body. So choose a berry instead of a banana. Um, choose, if you're getting, you kind of have that crunch thing going, instead of reaching for the Weight Watchers bag that you bought at the workshop, skip that and have cucumbers. Peel yourself a cucumber, eat that. Make better choices. Stop yourself and say, okay, is what I'm about to eat going to help move me towards my goal or away from my goal? So those are the three things you can do to speed up your metabolism. And I'm just going to tell you guys that I am doing all three of them. I've been at a stall, as I shared with you, for a year. And guess what? I've been doing this for two weeks. And I am down five pounds in that two-week period. Um, we're going to see. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to keep updating you. So do this with me. Join our Facebook group, WW Living Life on Track. Everyone is welcome. If you're not on WW, you are still welcome. And let's support each other and get that scale moving for all of us.